probably probably one of my favorite flies for the lakes. <clears throat> and it's on a size one. I was kind of having a little uh, competition with myself with those, seeing how many different species I could catch on that fly this year. So I've caught a hybrid, a white bass, smallmouth, largemouth, crappie, catfish, and I'm working on the rest. <laughs> Thought I got into a nice hybrid at Blue Springs a couple weeks ago, but it ended up being about an eight pound. Catfish. Hate that thing. I weighed them so you can throw them on a floater. Um, they will sink, but I like throwing them on a sink tip to get them down a little bit deeper. I'll get this stuff. The body material is that um, chocolates game, this stuff, game changer wrap or whatever. There's some stuff though. Back there, that's identical to it. That works real good. So with the game changer wrap, it's two ends. So you got to cut it down the middle, and actually, it may, it'll make two flies that way. And these kind of scissors cut this stuff quite a bit better than the fly tying scissors do. And this one, this fly is really easy to tie. There's not a lot of material. The biggest pain with this fly is just getting it trimmed to the um, shape you want. These are those Flyman Frantic Tails. Um, there's another one to... I think Eastern Rises or Eastern Trophy or something. They make uh, they make one too that's a little bit different material. It's more of like a suede. This stuff's more like a felt or something. The tail will get wrapped every once in a while, but it's really not not too much of a problem. I'm gonna tie it with that pink thread. I like having the bright color on the nose and uh, it also when they get wet you can kind of see that pink line through that white too it's supposed to have a threader did you buy some pink thread for me <laughs> give it to me outside yeah. <laughs> Well, I've got all this for those pink squirrels that we were fishing up in Wisconsin. Yeah. I tied a bunch of those yesterday. They work. I thought I was going to run out. It's only, if you go up to the driftless area, it's really the only fly you need. Yeah, you can catch. I like the uh, Frenchie with the pink hot spot on it. So yeah. It's really effective. Those pink squirrels work really good for bluegill too. It's basically a, um, a pheasant tail mint with um, cooked it down tail and no um, legs. So this fly was originally tied on a longer shank hook. So to make this tail and body look right. The proportions you got to cheat this pretty far forward almost not quite to the eye but close you tie in these are kind of weird you tie the top portion in and i think these little wings were designed to uh keep the tail going straight back on the hook So you tie this in, and then with this bottom one, you fold it up. 
and tie it in on this side. Lay some thread down on it. And then um, what you do, you, you have like those little wings and then you just glue, put a little bit of glue on them and it holds that tail back straight. I said, if you get cast in a bunch and haul on a bunch of line, um, every once in a while you'll flip that tail around onto the hook. So that helps it so it doesn't wrap. Right. Fold this one back and do the same thing. Hmm. These tails are, they're real inexpensive. I think it's like two bucks for a pack of eight. And you kind of get it at the angle you want it. That's pretty good. So you, I don't know if you can see, but then what those little kind of rudder wing things do is keep this in line with the hook. That tail really swims a lot in the water. Way more. Those flies have more action than you would think. So then I get up here and then what I like to do, I like putting lead wraps on it so you can fish it on a sink tip if if you want. That's this is just that two five lead. It does. You can get black, chartreuse tails, I don't know what else. Then that body wrap comes in a bunch of different colors too. I made a few chartreuse body with the white the white tail. They fish pretty good. Then we do an orange uh, orange thread bump on them. So we'll just finish that off, and then we'll get that lead kind of secured down. This is one of those ones, if you're making them, you might as well make a bunch of them and then trim them all at the same time. You know, I'll get the bodies all done and then they're, you know, little puff balls and then you go through and trim them all. And they come in a lot of different sizes too. This is the, I think, large. Yeah, large. And it's for a one, one aught and two aught hook. I'll do some of the mediums on a size four. All right. Then we got to wrap the body. This stuff, if you can kind of find a gap, get your thread. You want your thread on that on that ribbon thing that's holding all this fiber in. You can kind of trap it down. And the same same thing like with those game changers. You want to. Pinch that down, and then with this little piece, you just pull it back. You you can wrap them pretty loose, and they actually sink a little bit quicker. I kind of like that more tight, compact body on them. So then you're just wrapping the rest of it. You just a little bit forward each time, but you want to keep it pretty much right on top of each other here. Keep all those fibers going back. You don't want to trap. <clears throat> the one thing, if you notice you're going to start running out, because <laughs> if you didn't cut enough, then, then start cheating, because it's a lot bigger pain to try to tie in another strip to finish the fly than it is to have one that's a little bit um, thinner. And you trim it with the same green scissors? I do, yeah. I trim like my game changers and stuff with those too. For some reason that material just 
it cuts a lot easier with that wider blade. But really, I mean, it's an easy fly. Like I said, it's caught a lot of fish this year. It's uh, not a lot of material, or different materials, I guess. Pull it tight here. Get one more. And then kind of the same as you did in the back, if you can kind of find a gap in that um, fiber, you want to kind of cheat your fly, fly thread through that get it up it makes the head just a little bit neater get in there tight sweep that back and then you build a thread bump Turning this over the trash and make some mess with uh, deer hair heads or game changers or any of this stuff. The easiest way I think to trim them out, and if you want them kind of rounded, um, like a sex dungeon head on one of those gallop streamers or whatever, the easiest way is to cut the top and bottom first. So figure out the angle that you want. I kind of know with this one. I want it almost as tight as I can get it in the back and I want to slope it forward so we'll start and kind of angle it up towards the top and you get that you know flat spot and then on the back this <coughs> or the bottom the same thing I want a lot of this hook exposed I don't want to take up very much of that hook gap so we're going to angle it back and cut it so you get somewhat of your profile it's like a rough profile then you if you squeeze the top you're going to do the same thing all the way in and angle it out towards the side so it's bigger at the top same thing on this side so now you kind of got a square or a box then what you do like same thing with those deer hair heads then you go in and start rounding out the sides so I'll move this around and kind of go same angle forward. Because really, I think this fly is effective because of the silhouette more than anything. And this is also one of those flies you can spend all day trimming to try to get it just how you want it. Or you can just get it kind of how you want it and deal with it. I do a lot of dealing with it. <clears throat> you just kind of keep working it down from there. You can kind of get some of the Scragglers. The black ones work real good too. On, I've got a lot of large mouth on the black. I like fishing the white though at the lakes just because there's so many shad and most of our lakes around here. You can color these too. Um, sometimes I'll color them, you know, gray on top or whatever. Get some of that stuff cleaned up around the hook point. And I'll kind of round out the front just a little bit.
Probably mess with this for a little bit longer, but you get the point. Then all it needs is some eyes. Um, like six millimeter or seven millimeter eyes work good on the size ones. <clears throat> and one thing with those eyes, um, I'll push them in a little bit, but I don't, I don't want to pinch them in on so much where it takes away from that profile like i don't want it flat i want to keep that kind of round um, profile the original version of this fly they don't even put eyes on it this is the finished fly i like having eyes on it This is a size one. Yeah, it is. No, no, no. You didn't you didn't get one? You didn't get any? No, because I didn't get it. No, no. Yeah, I think it was the fly, because when I changed over something that I didn't buy, that proper all the time. I think it's time to do it. I think it's when they were there from Kansas, Missouri. Yeah. 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 Maybe it works in Missouri. Then what? Yeah. Yeah. They probably they probably seen too many of them in Kansas. <laughs> After I get the eyes kind of set, um, I'll just kind of trim that head a little bit, clean it up more around the eyes, and then I'm done. Like I said, I think the profile is the biggest key with this fly. Alright. Here's one I spent a little more time trimming up. But those, those they're called frantic tails, but they really, really move in the water. And that bigger head kind of um, pushes a little bit of water, and then when you stop it, you know, it stops good. It turns to the side and stops. But good lake fly for sure.